All right, so heat engines, the final part of chapter 12. Now look, first of all, what is a heat engine? A heat engine is an engine that operates off of, take a wild guess. Heat. If, the, if, it's a, if, if, you're, if you're talking about an engine that operates off of heat energy, then it's a heat engine. So look, to put it simply, if you're putting gasoline into this engine, then it's a heat engine. So your car is a heat engine. What about a gas-powered lawnmower? Heat engine. Gas-powered chainsaw. It's a heat engine, right? Because you put gasoline in, what happens to the gasoline? It gets burned, it gets ignited, combusted, and a lot of heat energy is released. Gasoline pos possesses um, a lot of chemical potential energy. When you ignite it, tremendous amounts of heat energy come out. Now, look. Look up here. All, all heat engines... Now this is just a schematic diagram. If you if you look under the hood of your car, you're not going to be like, oh, there's that box, and there's that, and there's that. Uh-uh. This is just a schematic for how all heat engines work. Um, if you're talking about your car, the hot reservoir, so all heat engines have a hot reservoir, an engine, and a cold reservoir. So talking about your car, the hot reservoir is the place in your car where the gasoline gets combusted, which I think is the carburetor. Anybody? I'm not a car person. Cylinder. The cylinder. Wherever the gasoline gets combusted, uh, that's going to be your hot reservoir. It's where the heat is being generated. So then from there, once the heat is generated, some of that energy, remember heat is a form of energy. So that energy goes into the engine. Some of it comes out as work. Because what's the whole purpose of having an engine? To get work done, right? Like, you know, your car is basically a big work machine. As you drive your car up Hawthorne Boulevard, is your car doing work? Yeah. If you have a chainsaw, is the chainsaw doing work? Yeah. Um, okay, now, what happens to the energy that did not get converted to work? Well, if the energy didn't get converted to work, then it's going to get dumped out to the cold reservoir. So the energy that's going to the cold reservoir, it's basically trash. It, gets, it just gets dumped into the environment. What's the cold reservoir for a car? Not the exhaust. The cold reservoir for your car, well, you could say the radiator. I mean, if your car doesn't have a radiator, it's going to overheat really quickly. A, a radiator absorbs heat. But then where does the heat go? into the air, into the atmosphere, okay? So the ultimate cold reservoir for a car or lawnmower, or, you know, pretty much anything I can think of, the ultimate cold reservoir is the air around the engine, okay? And then the energy being dumped there, it's just garbage. It just goes into, goes into nothing. All right, so here's an example. <clears throat> Let's say, for example, that you have a heat engine where 100 joules of heat energy flows from the hot reservoir into the engine and then 20 joules of that gets converted to work right heat is measured in joules work is measured in joules so if 100 joules came into the engine and 20 joules comes out as work how much energy how much heat energy must be dumped to the cold reservoir 80 this is just all this is is conservation of energy so the first equation for heat engines QH must be equal to the work done plus the heat dumped to the cold reservoir. Basically, energy in equals energy out. If 100 goes in, then 100 must come out. Now, looking at this example that I just made up, how efficient, how efficient would that heat engine be? If, a, if 100 joules comes in, and 20 of it gets, gets converted to useful work. How efficient would that be? 20%, right? This would be a, an engine that's 20% efficient. So what's the equation for efficiency? The equation for efficiency would be work done 
divided by the energy that came in from the hot reservoir. Okay, and then you can actually get a third equation. If you substitute these two equations together, take this first equation, solve it for work. Work would be QH minus QC. Take that, plug it in there, and then this simplifies to 1 minus QC over QH. So you, you'll, you'll see that in my notes as well. Okay? So any questions? It's a pretty, pretty simple concept. You know, a heat engine has a hot reservoir, a cold reservoir, an engine in between. You can figure out the efficiency by taking the work done and dividing by the heat energy that was provided to the engine from the hot reservoir. All right, now, you got to know this thing called a uh, car no efficiency. If anybody says car not, you're going to sound you're going to sound ignorant. It's car no. It's a French guy, right? C A R N O T. You drop the T, car. Anybody take French? How do you how would you say that? Car no. The car no. The car no efficiency. Okay? Uh, what is the Carnot efficiency? The Carnot efficiency is the maximum, and if I were you, I'd write this down. It's the maximum possible efficiency for a heat engine. It's the maximum possible efficiency for a heat engine. And what does the maximum possible efficiency depend upon? It depends upon the temperature of the hot reservoir and the temperature of the cold reservoir. So the equation for the Carnot efficiency, which you want to memorize, the little c here, EFF sub c, what does the little c mean? Carnot. Uh, it's temperature hot minus temperature cold divided by temperature hot. This is the equation for the Carnot efficiency. And you must be in Kelvin. Um, I almost guarantee you that on the AP exam, they're going to give you temperatures in Celsius just to try to trick you. Okay, So you're going to see the temperature in Celsius, and you're going to go, oh, convert to Kelvin. How do you get temperatures into Kelvin? Temperature, temperature Kelvin equals temperature Celsius plus 273. Okay, And just so you're aware, it's actually not possible to reach the Carnot efficiency. It's like a theoretical thing. You know, it's, it's on paper. Um, the bigger the difference between the temperature hot and temperature cold, the better the efficiency is going to be. Okay. All right, so any questions on heat engines? Oh, and final thing for this screen. So I wrote up here, note, work is negative for a heat engine. So what do we mean by negative? So here's the engine. What's the sign convention for this chapter? Out is negative, in is positive. So notice which way is the work going for a heat engine. Out. Work comes out of a heat engine. As opposed to, let's go to the next screen. So if you take a heat engine and run it in reverse, you're talking about a refrigerator. It's the exact same diagram, but the arrows are running in the opposite direction. Now, why would this be a refrigerator? Well, if you think about it, so think about your refrigerator at home. I hope everybody has a fridge at home. I love my fridge. In fact, you know, my wife wants to get a new fridge. You want to know why? Not because the one we have doesn't work. It's because it doesn't match our kitchen. Like our, our dishwasher's our dishwasher's black, our stove is black, and the fridge is white. Just, you know, it's a color cloud. I'm like, we're not, you know, fridges are expensive, okay? So think about your fridge at home, okay? What does your refrigerator do? What your refrigerator does, so inside your fridge is cold, outside your fridge, well, not hot, but definitely, you know, relative to the inside, outside the fridge is warm, right? What your refrigerator does is it takes heat energy, heat energy from inside the fridge and moves it which way? Out. Right? That's why the inside is cold. Your refrigerator takes heat energy from inside the fridge, moves it from a cold environment to a warm environment. Does heat like to flow that way? Uh-uh. 
Which way does heat want to flow? From hot to cold, right? Heat wants to flow the other way, okay? So in order to do this, what must be supplied? Work, right? Work has to come in. So this cold reservoir, this is your fridge. The cold reservoir is your fridge. Uh, the heat gets pulled out of the fridge. Into Another name for a fridge is a heat pump. It gets pulled out of the fridge, okay, and then gets pulled to where? The hot reservoir. So the hot reservoir is like your kitchen or where, outside the fridge. Does that make sense? But in order to do that, work must come in. So notice that work is positive for a refrigerator. Why is work considered positive here? Because work is going in. Okay, And the same equations apply, like heat coming in from the cold would have to be equal to work plus heat dumped to the hot. Does that make sense? Same exact equations apply. All right, so let's do some examples. So that's the end of the lecture, last lecture of the semester. Let's look at an example.